right, so today we're in a 2020 Pajero Sport. Uh, so uh, this is the QF model. So this is going to cover from 2020 to sort of uh, currently. Now your dash will look like this. So you've got that here and here. Uh, your aircon uh, climate controls in here, and you've got your trim around here. Looks like this. Then uh, so this is the install video for you, and this is the head unit's going to like, suit you. So what you have going on in these cars is you got a bit going on. This uh, customer is actually replacing the other unit because he said, and he said it's a common issue. The touch screen on here is starting to play out. It's a bit like annoying, and a lot of people replace them from like, so, uh, like Mitsubishi. And it will just and it just does it again so it's like still under warranty but they put the same one in and it still has the same problem so there's a few Mitsubishi models where they have dropped the ball a bit anyway we're going to put one of our units in today this unit has wired car play he's put in a little wireless box so our unit has a wireless car play it works okay on this he said like sometimes like it doesn't work you've got uh, so our maps installed which our one has as well info not much going on there settings that's probably what he's saying to talk about not too much you can't really control too much to do with anything else here it's just uh making sure that was what it was like in this unit carplay pops up multimeter yeah so pretty standard um you do obviously get you've got your 360 cameras here and you've got your traction control on your wheels and then you do on the steering wheel here have this button here now if you push this it obviously brings up your different camera views and then back to home um, home. um and then we have our other standard steering wheel controls that will all keep like are working uh, and then on the side you've got these are cruise control you've got some extra ones down here so we've got these these and these you've got two usb ports down here so we should be able to retain uh, both of those this hdmi port uh, we're not going to retain don't even know why the, why the cars uh, have those uh, no one ever like, uses them at some point there could have been some technology that they uh, were going to bring out so that's about it so our unit will keep all that happening so we'll just go through and we'll do the install here first thing we're going to do is get these two side panels off these can notoriously be a bit tight so I've taken this one off already and you can kind of see there's three clips in here what we'll do is we'll come on this other side now you obviously get the trim tools in the kit I find come in here you should be able to get it almost all the way in and then if you get the second tool we include in the kit and just put a little bit of force on it come up a little bit like that you'll be able to pop it up pretty easy there and just get the trim tool in here to do that last bit off it's down the bottom there so again if you just use a trim tool and just slowly like lever it it'll sort of come off just take your time it's plastic it's going to come off it's just tight that's fine now basically this whole thing pulls out they do sit in pretty tight the screws are like a below it so that's okay but you can sort of see if i try and pull on here that's just pulled out got a little tip for these sort of things is you kind of go pull 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 just seeing how much i can do with my hands here because sometimes you can get them a bit with your hands or you can't and then it's going to be the trim tool again in there yeah so go a fair way there um that a bottom popped out then you can get your tool on the side here give it a bit of a lever on here Tim on this side give it a bit of like a lever now these are tight and at the top here they've got two clips in them and they're tight they're just like the old ones the older previous model so actually what i did here is i actually got our trim tool all the way in here and i sort of was levering that and pulled it you got to pull on it quite hard it'll like pop off the only thing you kind of want to be careful of is don't lever too hard on here because you'll see you can uh, ding, uh, ding in the trim a little bit and then once you've done that side this side you should just be able to pull with your hands like that and it will come off so you can kind of see those are the clips here that are holding it in the top here. This one pinged off, so what we can actually do, we don't have them in the kit at the moment, but we can include some extra ones in the kit because we do take these off and like use them again so we get the good factory fit. I can actually see where it is anyway, so I'll grab it. But again, keep an eye on the clips coming off. And again, they are tight. Get in there and get the like, one off, and then you'll be okay. So trim tool in tight. You can like, reef on this pretty hard, but don't obviously don't do it too hard. You don't know sort of where the where are the sort of the, uh, the stuck point is. So you've got to get something in there to put some pressure on that as you pull it out. And that basically comes out, and then we just unplug all these plugs in the back here. These plugs always will have a little tab on the top push the tab in or the tab on the bottom and that whole bit comes off so the tabs i was talking about just tab push tab down pull out this one's on the bottom push down pull out those are all your tabs there then we've got our, our actual unit here it has to come out fairly straightforward one two three four other phillips screws and then this whole bit will uh, pull out and we'll take the plugs out of the back of that Once those four Phillips screws are out, 
this thing just pulls out fairly straightforward. And there's a number of screws in the back here. Again, I'll show you these in a second. Screws, number of cables. But again, they all basically have a tab you push down and then you pull the plug out. Go through and do all of those. I'll show you in the back here. So we're just gonna take out all of these. If you ever do have problems trying to like, take them out, you can actually um, you can actually use a trim tool to push on the top bit to get it out. Sometimes some of them can be a bit of a pain to get out, but we will see here how we go. Right, so that's the old unit out. <laughs> they can seem a bit tough to get out. So the trick here is if you're trying to pull it out and it isn't are coming out, push it back in. Make sure you push down that so really hard. For like this one, I actually just got the trim tool in here to push it down. Push it down properly, then pull it out. So that's the trick. So because if it comes half out, it gets sort of jammed. So you push it back in all the way in, push it down as hard as you can, and then I pull it out. So there's a couple on here that were a bit hard. But these are all your factory plugs. Um, not all of them we'll still use. Some of them we will, some of them we won't. Um, we'll go through that soon. Now we'll cover what you get in the kit. It looks like there's a bit going on, but it isn't too bad. I'll explain to you. So obviously you get the fascia and the VDA unit looking like that. Um, on the back here, main 20 pin plug, auxiliary plugs, GPS, 4G antenna, AM, FM. So that's all built in our fascia -like unit. Um, we get our two extra uh, brackets here to put our climate control in. So they go with that. A USB drive for other uh, updates. You do get like a manual. This is our Bluetooth, it's a Wi-Fi antenna. So this actually plugs in the back here. We have, majority of people aren't gonna be using uh, the RCA like pre for an amp, so that's where that one plugs in. OBD2 scan tool, you can check engine codes and uh, read data. Factory USB retention, so you should keep uh, both those uh, factory USBs uh, working. Third USB retention in case you have a different type. Majority of you are gonna have lights like this one, so this cable is not like needed. SIM card, this is so you can give this internet the whole time. This will probably end up going into the, um, the glove box. Third USB port goes in the back of our unit and the auxiliaries here. Pre-outs, majority of people with Pajero Sports. The sound's pretty good already. Um, we've got a good DSP chip in ours, so you're not gonna be oh, <laughs> using this. 4G antenna. GPS antenna because obviously our units are like a sat nav so it can have its own, they have their own like, maps on them and stuff. Auxiliary input, majority you're not going to be yeah, using this. Uh, our camera input so you can run, uh, so obviously the factory our 360s or camera will uh, work and then you can also run uh, like a second camera in here so handy for caravan camera whatnot. not, saves you having those extra screens on there. The same as the GPS, you don't have to have your HEMA like maps or offline uh, like maps on a different screen. These are our two uh, sort of USBs and external mic. Uh, this person's having a DAB installed so that it's been added into the kit, so I'll show you how you do that. Trim removal tools, obviously to get out the unit, the easy install harness kit, and the CAN bus adapter, and hydration, hydration assistant. So that's everything in the kit, so we'll just go through and show you what to do next. Next check we want to do is just we want to grab our, our easy harness adapter the kit there, um, and we want to make sure everything like, is well, sort of working before we go through and actually go and like, put it in. Should, should always be good, but it's good to check before you put it in. So grab this. Now this is not too hard. What you're gonna do is you gotta find the plugs that uh, match it and like match them up. They'll only plug in like where they can. So obviously that goes into there. This one goes into here. Uh, this one will go into whatever one fits it into here. Uh, this one flat four one. I've seen one of those somewhere into here. And we have a look what we're left with. So in our harness we have some things like 360 levers connected. This car does have 360 so this stays connected. But sometimes we might just need to unplug this and plug this into here. Um, it just depends on your model. So what you do is you plug it in and see what's, see what's like working first. What you're left with is this one here which I'm not 100% sure what it is but we don't actually need it. Some might be the factory uh, <laughs> mic and some other options. This here is your HDMI which doesn't happen. This is our like, USB retention which we will uh, use. This here will either be a like, DAB antenna or like GPS. Oh, this is probably GPS and this is probably DAB antenna. And this is our FM AM which we'll uh, use. So we won't be using one, two, one, two, these three, but we will be using like these two. And I'll go through and cover that soon. So basically we grab like unit, we've put this, we want to put uh, this cable in too. And I'll put this one in, this one can stay in. This is our Bluetooth or Wi-Fi antenna. This gray six pin one goes in here. This cam in RCA goes to the purple wire RCA cam in. Foam that actually comes in the box is quite handy to put down here for this too. Because uh, when you're doing this yourself, it's sort of a bit of a juggle. That goes in. Um, and then what we get is we get our big main plug here, our 20 pin plug, goes into this side, 
plug it all in. Then we just want to turn the car on, see if something happens. We've got power, which is always a good start. Our base, oh, what we want to check is we want to check plug in the antenna too, which just goes into our circle one here. But all we really want to check is we have power, so that's a good start. Steering wheel controls, so let's just give that a crack. So you can see steering wheel controls are like, uh, like, uh, working, doing volume up and down. See if we get sound coming in. Work towards. <laughs> We got sound coming in and it's sounding good, so that's good. And then we want to go into reverse, hopefully. And we got our 360 cameras happening here. I'll turn off this big line here, I'll show you how to do that. But we've got our trajectory lines and everything is working how it worked on the on the old unit. Then we're trying to check our camera button on the steering wheel. Now this is currently not working, so we'll just come into here. No, sorry, into here. Power and phone. Car type, sorry. Put that as two. Then we'll just see if this. Now you can see I'm 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 pushing it a button on the steering wheel, and I am getting the different cameras coming in. That's basically what you have to do there. So again, apps, car info, car type, set is number two. Um, there's all the stuff in here you don't really, this is just, it will be linked to CAN bus settings. There's nothing here you really need to worry about. So we'll go home there. So we're happy everything's working there. We've got sound, we've got steering wheel controls, which is everything we wanted to have going on. Yeah, that's cool. That's fine. That was just me just checking the steering wheel control. So that is good. Now we basically pull it out and we'll go and put all the wires and things in and, and then put like, the unit in. Right, so I've grabbed all the cables we need. I've got them all here. Um, I'll go through them and explain to you. Our GPS we'll put in. Now, what I didn't say in the kit there is we sometimes have, we will actually now have external like mics in our, our kits again. We took them out for a bit because we found they weren't they weren't actually uh, helping. So what we normally suggest with external like mic is when it's all kind of almost at the end, I'll explain as you test it with it and without it because majority of the time you don't need it, but you can run it if you want to run it uh, up to you. So GPS just needs to have a clear view of the sky. No steel above it, plenty of options up here, underneath here. That is all fairly easy. That's peel the stick pad off. There's a bit of fluff under here. So obviously you just go back where there isn't any fluff. Again, give it a push down 10 or 20 seconds or so. That'll make sure that's all stuck on. And that's our GPS on, <sighs> nice and done. 4G antenna, this is if you wanna give the uh, uh, head unit its own like data, which you can do. Some people uh, use this, some people don't. We have like, videos explaining how it helps, but kind of like know about it, you probably, if you don't know about it, you probably don't like, need it. If you can't understand it, you might be interested in it. Again, this just needs to be in that same sort of spot that GPS was in underneath the dash, peel the stick pad off. So again this 4G antenna, find a spot for it. So it's those two stuck on. SIM card, again, might use this, might not. Again, it's best just to run it, uh, have it in the glove box. Then you can access it easy without taking everything out. So obviously glove box is down here. Pretty easy on this on these cars just to run something behind here, put your hand in there. Lots of room, which is handy. It comes through. Like that. Do the same with the third USB port. Now all these extra USBs, actually in this case this, this customer's having a DAB and so I'll be using the third USB for the DAB. So I'll probably actually run, be, I'll be running the uh, a DAB behind the glove box anyway. So I will run that down there for now. So third USB handy for a DAB uh, dash cam TPMS if you are using those of ours. Now, USB retention cable. So this should slide into here like so. And that plugs into our two USB ports here and it uh, just means your two car side USBs are going to keep uh, working. Now majority of people probably don't need two of those so you could have this extra sort of USB in the glove box or like use it for our dash cam or our TPMS and just have like one have like one uh, going. I'm going to hook up two because that's what we, well, that, I think that'd be fine for this customer. External mic again I'll cover that. What you basically want to do is you want to get everything done, put it in, do a test call uh, like with and without it and see how it sounds. So what we have left over is this is the, is like the HMI one so we knew we weren't going to be using that. This will be the DAB antenna which we might see if we can get an adapter for in the future if it works. We have quite often tried to use a factory one it hasn't been that good. Newer cars it might be a bit better so that 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 and then this wire here we weren't uh, using either so I will just take those ones we aren't using back in a second and they'll be out of the way and remember these ones down the bottom are for your climate control. So that's about that now we'll go and run the DAB. Right, so we've got the, the fascia, the fascia, our fascia. Now, we've got to swap a few things over. So, air vents, one, two, three screws, and then they have a clip. You've got to pop that clip out, have a clip here, pop that one out, and that's about it. So, 
both of, of, uh, of those. If you have them kind of set up the same way, you can just take it out, transfer it over. The uh, hazard, etc. one, two, the Phillips heads, that comes out. Climate control, one, two. And then we also have our clips. So we'll start with the AC and we'll uh, go from there. So obviously one. Again, just when you put these down, we have foam in our box. So if you're putting the, the face shield, the head unit down, just always put them on foam or towel or something. Just helps protect them. So you can see those three screws are out. And then, <laughs> just like I said, they have a little clip on that side. So pop that and pull that side and the clip on this side. Comes out super easy. That'll slide into our one. Show you that in a second. Not much really to sh so I show you there. That bit straight into our one and those screws go back. So the hazard one comes up pretty straightforward. Two screws. There is clips there. So you just got to pop those the clips back and then pop these clips back on the top side to pop out that. The climate control comes out easy, just two screws there. Then you come over here and you can see um, this one just screws straight back in using the existing ones. So this here you got to put our, our brackets on so we include these like brackets. They are going like uh, that, uh, like this. You can't use the existing screws for that. I will prov uh, like provide some more screws. If you didn't have it in your kit, sorry about that. They're just You can just use like general like wood screws or whatever you can buy that sort of fit that. Normally you probably want sort of four to four and a half mil screws. The factory one's just a bit big to screw in into the uh, into our like, fascia. Basically, this comes in, and we just check how all that is. Looking at the front. Now, just in a little bracket here, depending on what model you find, you might just need to find, you need to just snip these, a little gap in the middle here out, like so. That just allows the locking thing to clip in there, and then you can put them back in. So that's sort of how it should all be like locking those big screws you couldn't yeah those big screws actually just go back in there like so and then that's what we're looking like on the front there what you end up with everything placed back in now the one last thing to do is these little clips now these little clips you can so basically get a flat head under, under like one side stretch them and they'll uh, pop off so it's a bit hard to show with one hand so basically you get a flat head under here like so and then you always want to um keep a hand up, up, above it to catch them like that how they come off and then you obviously take it transfer it and put it onto onto our face like that push it down so it clips in and then you're away so go around and do uh, uh, all of those so what we're actually gonna do for this customer i'm gonna come back here i'm gonna actually uh, run our, our dab into the um the glove box here and we're gonna take this back and we're actually gonna see if we can get the factory uh dab antenna to work because if we can it's just quite it just if you want to have the dab it's one less thing you have to add on one less thing you have to install i should say so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to run this dab antenna into the glove box too so i can send out an adapter cable for the for the customer and he can try and adapt it into our dab and see if it works we could also do this you could actually um you'll see our gps plugs actually the same here as this one so you can actually well it's a little bit different but we could actually try and get the, the uh, factory of uh, a gps to work but uh, normally we find our ones work better um just because the ones that they have on cars are old technology already so our one seems to work always seems to work a bit better than those ones so i'll tape up a bit of stuff and i'll show you at the end what i've taped up i just like to uh, tidy it up a little bit and we'll go from there right so then we're pretty much ready to put the unit back in so i, I like to stuff on one side and, and i go to the other and then we just sort of rest it up there check everything's still working and then we'll put it in again like i said before you can tape it as much as or not as much as you like the ideal thing is sort of the wires are sort of going and then a drop behind so that's like when you run these like glove box ones just to make sure you're obviously like running behind this so they come back in that like box area external mic i'll show you what i do we pretty much just sit it here and then do a call like with and without it and you can choose okay we'll start on like one side here plug everything back in so that goes in remember to plug this in if you're using a uh, multiple cameras like a caravan camera now's a good time to do that so that goes into there and then we just start doing every other little thing this is our 4g modem it's our third usb this is our twin usb which are retaining on the factory ones so you just start pushing everything in then over here we start putting these in we've got our gps blue to kind of blue it's a little bit off that our color match purple to purple and then we get a bit further in and we just always like to have a look make sure we haven't forgot any very easy to forget them fmam and then what we do is we just sort of you push it all back and you'll kind of, when you do it yourself you'll sort of see you kind of want them to get to go in that little boxy bit and then you'll see they'll actually drop down behind there um, but we don't have to get it perfect yet we just want to get to sit there turn the car on this is a very important step because you don't want to put it all on and then be like oh i forgot something or saying doesn't work again you're just checking on the main things cameras sound is all working so well it's good we know we've got 
power. Yeah, get that reverse is coming in, that's fine. Steering wheel controls, that's fine. Early, very early. Stop radio. Cool, so happy with that. Um, now we can go and put the rest. So uh, obviously I'll make sure you uh, like plug in the hazards and the uh, and, like, the AC plugs, so I'll plug all of those in. Um, so now would be the perfect time to do the uh, test call. You could test with and without the external mics, which one you prefer. And then we're just gonna go in and get this to push in and line back up. Now, because we started at the top coming out, we'll start at the top going back in and we should find that we all just sort of clip in just softly like work it. If it's feeling really tough, just double check that all your holes are lining up. Um, you can give it a fairly good push all the way around like you saw where you put those uh, sort of clips in so you can see. That's it all like, sitting on now. Put on your side clips and that's pretty much it done. So it's all in and uh, looking uh, pretty good. The install's not too hard, it's just putting notes like these things in can be a little bit like fiddly, but we got all that done, so that's fine. Obviously we plug those in, so those all are working. Now you got a great like unit, you got a wireless CarPlay, Android Auto. It runs uh, Android as default, so you can install any uh, apps you want. Obviously we still have our steering wheel controls working, all the factory sounds working. I think these I think these actually have like a factory amplifier in them, so that's all working. Obviously you keep all your 360 camera and stuff happening now there's a few things we want to turn off there so car infotainment about device settings 8878 um can type now just our front door was showing out uh, the wrong one so we'll just swap that and press save this reboots the unit so doors show the correct one open now so you can see obviously open that up that was just a bit confused before and then the only other thing in here is settings car infotainment uh video just turn off uh, reversing assistance line because before uh, so that was kind of like taking over our one so then that's all in like that so there we go there we have it all done pretty straightforward install should be to do it yourself without too much problems any dramas give us a call and um, we're always here to help